Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a CH Control Manager profile for Elite Dangerous. I've had a couple of requests from these, I've seen it pop up in our HOTAS, uh, the Elite Dangerous subreddit, as well as my comment section here on YouTube. So I'm going to show you how you do it. I'm going to assume that you've already watched my CH Control Manager tutorials, the previous videos. If not, now would be a good time to go watch those before going into this, because I'm not going to explain a lot of Control Manager's functions, I've got other videos to do that. So please go see those. So with that being said, let's start with Map Wizard. Select your devices. In my case, it's going to be a Fighter Stick Pro Throttle Pro Pedals. Click OK. Yes, you do want to combine the devices. 8 axis, 32 button, buttons, absolutely. And you are going to want CMS capability. Do that, and then you're basically done. Click Finish. Here you go. The stick, I pretty much leave alone. I don't do really anything there. First, you're going to want to come to the throttle. If you want to use your throttle where zero is at 50% marker, and then below that's reverse thrust, above that is uh, forward thrust, all you have to do is simply click centered here, and I recommend adding some Velcro, see my CH uh, throttle Velcro mod, how I did it. There's a couple of other ways uh, out there. You can put it on the track as well uh, that other folks have done it. You know, to each their own, whatever works, <laughs> whatever floats your boat as far as that goes. Uh, I would suggest maybe adding a little bit of a dead zone uh, around that center point so it gives you a little bit more of an area. And you may even want to set that dead zone as high as 10 or 15 steps, uh, depending on where exactly you want that 50%. Personally, I don't like to set that up that way in Elite Dangerous. I feel that having the full range of the throttle motion gives me a lot more control options and flexibility. And then I use my toe brakes to toggle whether or not I'm flying forwards or backwards. Again, that's how I have it set up. There are, there are other ways of doing that. Next, you're going to come to your mini stick. Notice how it is just steps up, down, but not actually doing anything. You're going to want to put it into DirectX mode. Set this up as CM device number two, and axis for the X axis, and then you're going to want to do the same here for the Y axis. I also highly recommend adding a three to five step dead zone for both of these axes. And the reason being is your, thr or your thumb will have a tendency to rust here. And even if it's just applying a little bit of pressure, the game, it is sensitive enough that the game will oftentimes detect that. Uh, and maybe sometimes it doesn't go absolutely back to the absolute centered position. So you might get a little bit of drift as a result of that, or you might notice you're drifting, and that's just because of where your thumb is resting. A little bit of a dead zone helps there. Alternatively, you can adjust S-curves to your heart content. I prefer to keep all my curves linear, but that's me. Uh, this is stuff that you can spend literally hours tweaking to your heart's content uh, if you so wish to do so. Everything else is pretty much buttons until we get to this hat switch right here. By default, it does absolutely nothing. Personally, I have mine set up to do uh, press F12 or Alt plus F9. Uh, basically, recenter track IR, turn off and turn on, shadow play or other recording software. That's how I have it set up. Other people will take these buttons here. Uh, completely out of DirectX mode and then bind them to actual keys on the keyboard to match with their Elite Dangerous or other game profiles. Uh, some people prefer to do it because generally speaking as they make software changes and stuff like that it doesn't nuke your profile in the game so you're not spending 20 or 30 minutes going back after an update uh, basically fixing everything or remapping all of your device buttons. Personally I prefer to do that kind of stuff in game again to each their own and then I also have voice attack and multifunction displays and a bunch of other stuff that many other people generally don't have so you know again your results may vary you may want to change a few things here but if you do want to set this up as a second POV hat switch what you can do is say direct X mode hit any of them it doesn't matter which one use as POV and now all of those will be as a second point of view or uh, yeah point of view hat and set it up for device 2 if you set it up for device 1 it's going to mirror whatever these functions are mapped to it's going to recognize those as being one and the same so if you want it to have a, an additional second hat full at eight way hat switch then set it up for device number 2 as a POV hat and you're good to go 
In fact, for most people, that's probably all you really need to do. Then you're going to want to make sure that you're in map mode. You save the profile and then hit download to stick. Now, in my case, I'm going to actually open up. Oh, almost forgot. Rotor pedals. This I leave as R axes. The big question is what do you do with toe brakes? I put them into direct X mode and I leave them set as none and none. And then I go to CMS controls. Go to button 128. You can choose whatever button you really want. Uh, it just happens to be the last one in convenience, and this is the only one I'm using. I set that up to be, in my case, I think it's device 1, button 19, but you could be at you know, device 2, button 4, button 5, button 1, whatever you want it to be. Uh, whatever is not being used by any other devices. And then in your CMS controls, or I'm sorry, see an editor here, I'm going to go ahead and paste. I say go to JS3, axis 1 is greater than 150 steps, or JS3, axis 2. JS1, JS2, JS3, if yours happens to say fighter stick, pro pedals, pro throttle, then this would be JS2.A1, and then you'll be able to see A1, A2 for right and left brake. 150, each one of these brakes can do 255 steps. It's still an analog type controller with a potentiometer, uh, so it recognizes it as being 1 through 255. 150 is about 60% depressed. At 60%, it will activate CMS.button128. That's where you go back here, button 128. If you set it up for button 71 here, it would say CMS.B71 equals true. That means pressed, uh, or true equals pressed, else. Hey, the toe brakes aren't being pressed, so 128 is not being depressed uh, in my case. Could be 74, could be 73, could be 1, could be 55, whatever or however you want to set that up. Notice the if, else, and if, and then the, the beginning script and end script. You can always check the script. It compiled successfully. Just exit. Then you want to save and download the devices. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and load my default profile. Now in my case I'm going to make sure a couple other things are running. Track IR is running. Target is running for my multifunction displays. Else things won't necessarily show up correctly and we will launch Elite Dangerous. Next step in the process is to launch Elite Dangerous. Go to Options, Controls, and you want to select custom profile and keep going down and start binding everything. Something that's important to note, if you turn things left, it will invert the axes. If you don't want things in uh, axes inverted, uh, always bind to the right or basically pull it to the right or use the right axis, the right toe brake, whatever. Um, here again, right, invert axis is off. Got to scroll down here. I have my throttle to forward only, and I'm going to click on here. I'm going to activate my toe brakes, and it will map that, and I want it to be hold. And then you can just kind of see everything else here. Uh, you know, you map it until however you want what button to do what, and you're good to go.